we are in the winery of Mestre Daniel, my grandfather, in Vila Alva, Alentejo. And this is a really special place for us, for my family, because this, this was the winery where my grandfather made wine for 30 years. In this specific region, we have a big tradition of making Italian wine. Talias are these big clay pots that we have here in our winery. Uh, it's a tradition that the Romans left here 2,000 years ago. We have some Talias here in this winery of the 17th century that are still making wine. This is a project of friends. All of us has our jobs during the week and then we come to the weekends, we come here to rest and make Talia wine because it's something that we love that we like to do. And it's really important for us, not only the economic part of the business, okay, but to show this culture, this tradition that we have here in our small village and show it to the world. We have the problem of the desertification here in the interior of Portugal. And with this small business, we are bringing people here to see what we are doing, to know our wines. All the time that we invite people to come to visit us, we don't try to sell all, uh, our wine. We try to sell Vilova. We go to, with them to the other wineries. We do a tour around our village. Most important thing is that we, we want to show how Vilova leaves the Italian wine. We are located in the Vidigueira region. It's uh, 90 kilometers from the ocean. There is a hill that is called Mendru that is 400 meters high, and so it's the first boundary to the wind from the ocean. So it's a very fresh region. Our grapes come from vineyards from Vilava. They are vineyards that are not irrigated, with at least 25 years old. In the white, the varieties that we use are Atonvas, Perrun, Roupeiro, Lerian, Diagalves, Mantiud, some grapes that are almost extinct. And in the red, we usually use Tinta Grossa, a really old grape from here, Aragonês and Trincadeira. The best thing is that all of our vineyards, they are already blended. We don't know the percentage of each grape. And so that's why even sometimes the wines, they are, will be different from one year to other, because it's a natural blend that comes from the vineyard. So here, the best thing that we do is that we don't control nothing. It's all natural. When we started this project, we decided, okay, we want to do as a traditional way all the time. And so when Daniel got the, the tallies from his grandfather, the tallies were naked. For us, it was perfect. But then we start growing the production. And so we needed to do the pesgage. Pesgage is kind of impermeabilization of the tallies. Pesh is a mixer of bee wax, pine resin, and olive oil. It has to be melted in the fire and then we have to put the talha upside down and burn the old paste that are inside the talha. All the old paste has to squeeze with the, the hot inside of the talha and then we take the, the talha from the fire, you put the mixer inside and then you have to make sure that all the mixer covered the interior superficies of the talha and then it solidifies and impermeabilizes the talha. With this kind of impermeabilization, of course it's very easy sometimes to, to find some bee wax or some honey, then it's totally different from the, the stainless steel, that it's, the stainless steel is more neutral. The winemaking in Talhas is really special because we start making the, the harvest by hand. We crush it, we just take the stamps out. The rest, the skins, the grains, goes inside the talha with the liquid. And then two days after we crush the grapes, they start fermenting. It starts the fermentation naturally, no additives, no yeast. In the beginning, the grapes goes to the top 
and so that's why we need to do like punch downs with a piece of oak and with cork on the bottom. So we mix the grapes against the juice. And this is important because with the grapes on the top, it can get a lot of pressure and so it got, can get an explosion, so we don't want it. The masses with the cold of October and November start going down and they stay in the bottom of the talha. In the bottom of the talha we have a cork where we put a tab and then when we open the tab, the liquid is not clean. But after one hour, if you open just a little bit, it starts filtering the wine. All the process, it's really natural. So after the natural filtration of the masses that are inside the talha, we bottle the wine. So we usually say that we have uh, white for winter and reds for summer, because you can eat anything with our whites, because they are really gastronomic and the reds are really light, are really fresh, you can drink it in summer. We usually say that you have to drink our wines at the temperature that we have in the winery in November, so you don't drink the, the white as fresh as usual, and the reds, you can drink it in 14 or something like that. In our range, we have a wine that is uh, Tareco. Tarek is the small clay pots that almost everybody has in the, their house. We take it out after the 11th of November. And so this is a wine with uh, about two months and a half, three months of skin contact. It's a wine that we try to get the experience of drinking the wine almost directly from the talha. You have some fruity. It's the good balance between the uh, characteristic from the clay pot and the fruity, so it does not so heavy. It's some, some complexity with, with uh, some fruity style. We have a red, white and the palheto. Then we have other uh, two levels of wine, that is Mestre Daniel. All the range Mestre Daniel, it's uh, six months in skin contact, usually between September until February, March. And after that we, we bottle. These are, of course, with, from vineyards with at least 25, 30 years old. Nowadays we are doing another wine, that is the 26 in Roman letters. It's the Mestre Daniel wine that after six months in talha, we take it and we, we put it in a clean talha without masses. And this stays there for one year under a skin of olive oil. Staying more time inside the talha, the wines uh, take more tannins, more complexity. We, we usually say here that in St. Martin's day, go to the winery and taste the wine. Because it's a, a really big tradition. We have people singing in the wineries, the traditional songs from Alentejo. People go to, to the house of each other to taste the, the, the wine that the other did and they compare if who did the best wine. It's really nice to see and to feel that ambience in St. Martin's Day. It's when we taste really the, the wine because the, the production starts in August, September, and uh, until uh, November, we don't know how is the wine. So it's very important. We are very nervous to know how was the, the final product. And so sometimes we are happy. Sometimes we are not so happy because being a natural product, sometimes there are some tallies that we don't, don't like and so we don't drink it. <laughs> wine for me, it's, it's really important because it gave me a lot of memories of my childhood in this winery with my father, my, my grandfather, and even with friends, because it, this is a wine of friends. Because what Talia wine makes, and the Tarex make, is to join people. It's an excuse to invite persons to go to the home of each other, to taste the wines, to talk. It, it brings me uh, memories of my childhood, and it's really important. That's what moves me here to, to keep this project.